Yo, and welcome to tutorial 7. Uh, this one is all about path nodes. Uh, path nodes aren't mandatory for any map. Uh, well, they are when it comes to harvesters, but these path nodes are primarily for uh, the infantry and tanks. Uh, infantry and vehicles. Uh, so, what this means is, if you want to put AI into your map, follow this tutorial. Uh, first thing you need to know, uh, the path node itself can be found with a right click, uh, and add actor, add path node, sorry, path node. Uh, Pylons and nav methods do not work with this AI, so you have to use the classic style uh, path nodes. Uh, a path node is just a simple node that shows you uh, or tells the AI where to go next or where it can go from that particular node that it's on. So if an AI was standing here, it could go here, here, you can go anywhere around it, then prioritize the next one after. So now we've got that out of the way, uh, we'll go on to uh, path types. I went through this a little bit on uh, the Harvester tutorial, so you to go watch that. Uh, but I'll explain it again. Uh, you have three different types of path, well, technically four, uh, because you have an air path as well, which I'll go over at the end, uh, because you're not really going to use them all that often, because the AI isn't that good with air vehicles. Thank you for receiving, because I really needed that. Right, so we have three different, three different types mainly. Uh, we have blue, green, and white. Uh, the white path can take anything: uh, large vehicles, small vehicles, and infantry. Green can only take small vehicles and infantry. Sometimes it can take a large vehicle, but it's very rarely that actually works. Uh, so, yeah, and blue only takes infantry. So, if you're gonna make a like pan. Uh, tank tracks or tank paths uh, I suggest you only use white unless unless you're in a real sticky situation then you can force the path uh, which I showed you how to do in the building tutorial but anyway right so pathing is easy you just set up your paths don't go crazy because the AI will start freaking out and stop working uh, you can tell here that I've gone a bit crazy, but I had to go a bit crazy here for a very particular reason, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, right, so I suggest you use two or three paths for tanks because AI will love to uh, ram each other if there's only one or two paths. Uh, right here, I've only got two paths, but it seems to work fine. So, next thing. This part, this spaghetti by here is is here for a reason. Uh, this is actually a part of uh, the harvester paths, but it only really only gets affected when you have AI in them in the mix. So the reason it's spaghetti here is because I added these these two uh, nodes. These two these two nodes are actually the same node. Uh, I had to put two of them here because uh, the, uh, the harvester was actually pathing around them. Uh, so these are harvester, oh, blocked for harvester path nodes. It says what it does on a tin. Well, metaphorical tin. Uh, they block harvester paths. Simple as. That's all they do. Uh, you just dump them in the map and Wherever they are, the harvester cannot go. These can be found in actor classes, in navigation, and it's called uh, blocked for harvester path node. You just drag and drop. Simple as. Uh, there are no real uh, settings for this node. It's all automatic. So yeah. Right. So the next RX node I want to go over is. The RX building objective, which is this one here. Uh, this one does have a special uh, parameter. Uh, this can also be found in actor classes, uh, in navigation, and it's called building objective. RX underscore building objective. Again, drag and drop. 
Uh, this one is a bit weird because you need to lock the properties of the node and whatever building it's next to you have to put the building in this little parameter here. It says my building, whatever building it's closest to, I'm just going to select this one. Uh, Again, in, build, in the building tutorial, I told, I told you you have to turn these into uh, normal actors. Uh, this is another reason why. Uh, you select the shell, which is basically just the mesh. If you select anything else inside, it won't work. So you have to select the shell and then press the little green arrow. And then we get building objective. Now if I click on this, I can't click on anything. It has to be the shell simple as and that will tell the AI which building to go for it prioritizes certain buildings over others so it's handy to have gonna delete that because I already have one right another uh, AI uh, node that we use is not actually an RX node it's a UT node it's from Unreal Tournament it was within UT uh, Unreal Development Kit. So we don't have to uh, mess around with it all that much. Uh, this is uh, the UT defense point. Again, it's a defense point. And this is where AI comes to defend. They will stick around it and defend their little hearts out. Uh, this can be found in uh, navigation, again, in actor classes. And it's down the bottom, UT defense point. And you just drag and drop that. This does have a few uh, a few uh, settings, uh, mainly sniping on foot, only skilled, uh, weapons preferred. Uh, we we tend not to do this, uh, but on foot is the main one we want to do. Uh, it's nice to have tanks and whatnot there, but on foot is always good, and uh, we can prioritize it high and low. And then we can give it a name as well. You don't have to. Uh, that's primarily what that node is. It's just for defense. Uh, place him where you want the AI to defend. Simple as. Right. Now we have the doozy. This one is going to take the longest to explain. And it might hurt your head. Right. So. We have area objective. This can be found again in... Actor classes, navigation, RX, area objective. This is probably the most important uh, AI node there is. Uh, this prioritizes AI to go to base, or to attack the bases and defend the bases. Uh, this is a bit of a weird node uh, because it, it doesn't work on its own. Uh, to help me explain how it works, I need to select all the ones in the map so far. Uh, you'll have to set these up yourself, but this is the only way I know how to tell you how to do this. Uh, it can be very complicated, and I'm going to explain it to you in the most easiest ways I know. So, you might notice I have three. Uh, they all have a different group name. Yeah, the group name is directly related to the, the faction. Uh, it doesn't tell you what faction it is, but it tells the faction where to go. So, the way this works is Nod generally work backwards. They will go to three, then go to two, then go to one. Yes. So they'll they'll uh, object the the objectives works three two one. They will go to three. They will go to two. Then they will go to one. They can technically miss out two and go straight to one, but they will always work backwards, numbers wise. Well, GDI will work one two three. They will go to one. Then they will go to two. And then then they will go to three. Again, they can miss out two. Uh, I said this is going to hurt your head, and it can. Both teams can also work in the reverse. So, basically the way this works is, GDI will always prioritize the bigger number as the enemy base. 
and Nod will always prioritize the lowest number as the enemy base. Uh, the stuff in between is just like a waypoint. Uh, they don't they don't have to use the waypoint, but they can. Uh, you can add more than one of the same group. Uh, the AI will just randomize between the two. Uh, so if there was two objective threes, AI the the GDI AI will go to number two or stick at number one, and then go straight to either one of the number threes. So that's handy. Uh, again, I said they can they can reverse their roles. Uh, GDI can actually stop. Well, GDI and Nod can actually stop at the the point they're at and just defend it if they if they see fit to do so. Uh, this is generated. The, the code for this is actually generated from uh, how many AI, how many. Uh, let, me, let me get this right. How many of the friendly AI are in the set in the area, and how many uh, enemy AI are in that area? So, yeah, they can defend or attack. These these nodes are very very uh, intensive. So now we can see importance. We go into the next one down. It's importance. This is how important the the objective is. On this, everything except two. That means uh, it's, it's slightly more important than one. Uh, these numbers can range from one to uh, a million, but we, we tend to keep them quite low, uh, depending on where you want the AI to attack first or prioritize their attacks. Uh, we also, there are also other, other variants in this map. Uh, so let me just find one. Uh, no, it's not down there, it's down here. Uh, this one is importance zero. That means this isn't as, as important as this one. And you can see it's three because it's the, the, the nod base. <sighs> right. So there's importance. Importance is quite a kind of, uh, it tells you what it is, but that group number doesn't. So now we have the other three. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm going to go for the next two because the last one is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, show base radius. Uh, this actually is, isn't a, an AI setting as such. It is a, a visual setting in game. If we click that, we see a, a bubble around uh, the node. Uh, doesn't show it in the editor. I'm very surprised it doesn't, but it doesn't. Uh, so if I click this, uh, and then I click uh, show radius, all right. In game, when I go and play in game, it will actually show a bubble around this node, and within this bubble, it will select all of the path nodes within the bubble, and uh, and basically set the objective to almost all of them nodes and uh, whatever else is in that uh, bubble. So it helps when there's like walls and stuff in your base. Uh, it, it makes a, an area of influence, uh, an area of objective, should I say. Uh, so yeah, that is set by default. You can also set it up as a line of sight area. Uh, line of sight area is it doesn't use the bubble system it actually uses whatever is in the line of sight to it so if a uh, if an AI was over here and could see this node it could go to that node but if it was around the corner and it can't see this node it can't see the objective but uh, with the bubble it, if as long as the bubbles around this corner it can see that objective because it's prioritized. Uh, we mainly use this system for tunnels, but in general it's a very good system to use. Uh, the next one, block for vehicles, it just means vehicles don't prioritize the objective. Simple as. Right, and uh, these other two things, you don't have to worry about, they're, they're not, they're, 
they were added but never really focused on so they don't really work all that well so we just leave them blank but if you want to see examples of how they are used i suggest you go see uh, mesa or islands because both of them maps are set up with that uh, other than that i don't particularly use them because then they're, they're pretty much worthless to use uh, right now of beta 4. Uh, in the future we might update the ai and uh, some some of this uh, path stuff so the next and last node i want to show is i'm not sure if it's in here no it's not in there uh, so we're going to go to actor classes again and i want to find a volume path node a volume path node is actually a, a node for air units uh, these are pretty much whatever you want to be uh, start and height radius you don't need to mess with these uh, but these nodes if you want air units uh, AI ma uh, air units which aren't that good at the moment uh, they can fly they have a bit of a pilot's license but they like to crash a lot uh, you can use these uh, basically you you set these up in your map as uh, as squares uh, and then you just uh, move them around. That's about it. Uh, you can't have them too high or too low. Uh, they have to be in a, like a sweet spot. So you may have to play around with the heights of these things. But when you build paths, uh, I'm, I don't care about this map. Uh, this is in the SDK. I've just moved the files over. So I can save and uh, delete them if I wish so yeah we're undefining and then we're going to build this is going to take a while i'm sorry uh, and we can see how these work right so we can see that these don't actually connect so these are a bit too far apart so We're going to actually increase the radius uh, by uh, 5,000 to 5,000, not by about 5,000. And we can see it actually working. And within these uh, confinements, uh, it might be better to go to top down view and totally move these outside the map. Yeah, within these confinements is where the AI can actually uh, fly. So the AI will just move around within these uh, these volumes. I think that's the right word to use. So they can actually go up and down within these and around. But other than that, that's pretty much AI sorted. Uh, these are the buggers. I suggest you look at other maps to see how they they work if this tutorial has confused you. Uh, but other than that, I hope this helps you. Uh, I shall catch you in the next one. Ta-da.